So good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. Welcome online. I'm Cement from Hong Kong, and I will be the facilitators for today's online Zoom talk. And I would like to extend a warm welcome to all participants. Thank you for taking the time to be a part of these engaging discussions. And I'm very honored to work with Kodori Farms and Botanic Gardens since last year. I work with the farms for the Corridorate Earth Program, which this talk is part of the programs. Kodori Earth Program is an initiative that integrates various components of KFBG's nature conservation, sustainable living, and holistic education programs. This program is co-create and facilitate by leading educators and a groups of collaborators to let our participants to connect with ourselves, others, and the rest of nature, and also to experience a paradigm shift which enable us to cultivate resilience in face of climate change, economic uncertainties, and other related challenge. Today, we invite Om Shulisha. We are very happy to have you here. And she is from Thailand. And she will be shared under the top titled Coexisting and Co-Creating with More Than Human World. Om is an educator and co-founder of an eco village called Gaia Ashim in North Thailand in the area where she grew up. Before Om co-founded Gaia Ashim, she lived and worked as a facilitator and Wonshanet Ashim, a socially engaged spiritual community for nine years. She also helped create the next generations of global eco village network of Asia and Oceania and is currently mentoring young leaders of the network. In 2013, a year after Gaia Ashram was established, I had the privilege of having the chance to stay there for a month and to be involved in the early development of Gaia Ashram. I was very inspired by the project and the visions of living in harmony with nature, engaging people to live holistically, practice in their daily life, and realizing the interconnectedness of all living and non-living beings. And this deeply inspired me, and which is also one of the reasons that I joined Cotary Earth programs today. So I'm sure each of you are looking forward to own sharings, and it is a good opportunity to learn among us and also from her experience and gain knowledge and the practicals um, practice from her. So um, before the sharings that I invite Om to speak, there's few logistic things to note. So first of all, you are encouraged to turn on your camera during the talk and to feel the coexist and coexistence among us, especially for the Q&A sessions that will help us to interact and to exchange more. And you can also write your questions on the chat box, either in Chinese or English, we can have, we will have our translator to translate in English. And there is a simultaneous Cantonese and Mandarin interpretation provided during the talk. So you can select a language in the two bars under leaf. So if you have any questions uh, um, about the logistic, you can always like uh, type in the chat box. We will have our staff to help you. So once again, thank you for joining today's talk. And let us warmly invite Om to start our sharings. Thank you. Thank you, Natri. And thank you, um, Kadori Farm Earth Program for having me today. It is a privilege to be here sharing my stories and my journey with you all. And I hope that my sharing today, maybe you feel connected to, you feel resonate with. My only hope for today that you would gain from this hour of sharing would be at least it raised some curiosities for your own explorations about the many worlds, the many possibilities around us on this planet Earth. So my sharing today, it will be two main parts. The first part is sharing a personal journey, a personal story, which is uh, will give insight into how I have come to realize that 
coexisting with the modern human worlds around us is the best way to go about with life. And how is that helping me to realize my own world even more by acknowledging and reconnecting with the modern human worlds? And um, it, it, I think story sharing is the best way that I could convey such a deep uh, learning and insight. So I will be sharing a little bit of my stories how I have learned, how I have explored. And then after that, I will share about how do we, how did we create Gaia Asham based on the insight and the principle we learned about the coexisting with the modern human world. And I hope that through our, all this learning, this sharing and this story sharing that you find something that you can take away with. So I will start with actually my journey of exploring the modern human worlds, especially the natural worlds, is actually starting from my curiosity about my own world, about my own life, about myself as a human. I grew up in the culture, in the Buddhist culture that have taught me that to live a life as a human, it is a very, very rare chance. In Buddhist culture, we believe that life is a cycle. You have a life and then you die and then you maybe you reborn in some other form of life. Maybe you reborn as an earthworm, as a tree, as a as a dog. And to have a chance to reborn again as a human is very, very, very rare. So the someone taught me that what the Buddha the Buddha teach that the chance of becoming be born as a human, to be a human is it's like the chant where you throw a small ring, you know, into the, old, the big giant oceans. And how much chance is that a turtle that lives in the ocean would come up at the surface and the chance of their head sticking into that ring. It is just that much rare opportunity to have a human life. And this teaching touched me so deeply to realize that life is very precious and I might not have a chance again to become human. I must take it as a precious thing. So how is that going to be like? What it is like to, to live a, a human life as a precious thing to live? So I take a journey to explore. I want to know like what makes a human life precious? What makes a human life deserve an existence? So I took a journey in the university as a village girl growing up in a rural village. I, I believe that university, which is a huge, the biggest educational institute would give me that answers. You know, I, I, I grew up in the village. I, I have a huge idealism about university. So I went to university to find that out. Like how do I live my life in the way that is like, I would not regret if I don't, get to be born again as a human. So then I, I tried to find that answer and I realized soon enough that um, that is not a place to answer this question. <laughs> and that my question and my quest was actually quite strange to the reality there. <laughs> and um, I learned soon enough that university is also a place that is educate people to yeah. become part of the industrial growth society, which I was really, really clear that I was not wanting to be part of that or I could not imagine how being part of that would make me feel like life is, is, is a precious thing. I want to take every moment as, as precious as is possible. So I, don't want, I do not want to pursue that kind of uh, lifestyle. Or, so then... I take to myself to explore myself. If the university could not answer my, me that question of what do I do? So I start to do a lot of experiment myself in the university to search about me as a human, as a person. So one of the things that I did during that exploration was bringing myself in the situation in between life and date. I thought that maybe if I'm about to die, I would realize how life is important. <laughs> you know, I was really that much upset to find the answer about life. <laughs> I was really actually quite 
stressful about it. And then the, um, I didn't realize much putting myself in that situation. One of the things I realized was that fear of this does exist. And I was grateful that it actually holding me back, holding on to life. And one other thing that I explore to find out about my life is to stop looking outside and only looking inside. I do not care of what people around me or what is happening around me. Continue to look inside only to be able to understand myself, to look at what I think, what I feel, what I do, how I make decisions and all of that. Look inside only. And what I find out is that was I am a I was a very confused person. <laughs> I was like a lot happening in, inside my head. The more I look, the more I feel more stressful. And then I took another experiment, like maybe I should look outside. <laughs> Only look outside of me, look around. So then I did one experiment that I did was like in the university, in the campus. I just like, okay, I'm just gonna look outside. I look one way outside, outdoor, outdoor of the building. And I will look at this for at least 24 hours without looking away. <laughs> and then I did that experiment. So after four, during that 24 hours, this actually giving me quite an insight. I didn't get a lot of understanding about myself, my life as a human. But what I see and I experienced from that observation was that there's a connection. At least at that moment, I feel the connections of the light, of the sun, and how things become alive when the sun rises, and then how people, how nature become a bit more calm and peaceful when the light go down. So I, I kind of get excited to, to realize that. I mean, I learned this in school, but at that experiment, my heart feel like I discovered something. <laughs> I discover that there's a connection that no one tell the bird to go to bed or people to go to bed but it just happened because the, the sun go down and the sun rise and everything awake and alive again so I start to be interested in the connections the um so then I took further experiment in and uh, exploration in spending more time observing the world around, observing nature especially. And um, one of the things that I start to explore a lot is to expose myself in a different space, in a different situation, mm -hmm. and especially to really be curious about how things are working in connections. And one of the observation that I got and it shifted my heart, it changed my heart, it opened my heart, it cracked my heart and it shifted my my mind it was that one of the observations that I did during my journey of traveling to observe the world was that when I took a bus in the mountainside of Thailand and the bus was going very slow and I looked outside the window to observe like how many leaves, how many, how many different forms of leaf, of shape of the leaves that I could count along my journey. So I have my tick box. Every time I see new leaf, new shape of leaves, I make a tick. Like, oh, new, oh, that's a new, oh, that's a new. And as the bus goes for hours, like, I see the, the tick box just go long and long and long and endlessly. And every time I wow that oh this is new this is new I, I I didn't see this before and my heart just got a lot of this sense of like excitement you know wow there's a new thing as if I really discovered something <laughs> and then I just become more you know, my heart has become more and more amazed by how endlessly this could be hours of the bus that is running and many, many endlessly lists of new leaves that I discovered will just continue. Eventually, my mind and my heart realized that I could spend the rest of my life travel around the world. And it is possibly that I could not count all the leaves ha we have on this planet. 
and realizing that make my me feel even more amazed and that amazed feelings brought me to feel that wow i i am i am alive on this very very rich planet earth i am i am i feel the privilege of being here and experiencing the richness of the diversities that this planet earth has produced so that brought me to more and more feeling this the mind that is open and the more curiosities in my heart to to journey and to explore in the natural world and eventually there was one uh, experience that brought me to another levels of connections and realizations about our earth was that in one of my journey one day i came back from a long trip and in the airport in an airport in bangkok i took a wrong turn and then i was lost in the airport i lost the exit the normal exit that people usually exit from the airport eventually i was able to find a fire exit from the airport and then i took that exit and then because of i was exhausted i was so tired from the trip i saw a branch just next to the wall and then i put my very heavy backpack on that bench and i sat down and when i sat down in my mind in my heart in my whole being that feeling very relieved and relaxed i looked in front of me and then in front of me was this a small garden that was made to be there by of course by the human but all the flowers are real alive and there was one flower that was in that very right timing it stood out to to me although it was far but the energy of that flower was really standing out and i look in that moment i f- i felt it or i saw it very very clear the perfections of this flower of this plant the perfection that what i mean is that it is the perfect timing that i came here at this point and uh, now it starts to rain are you all hearing the rain <laughs> And um, really. the perfection of the the form, how symmetric it is, and the perfection of the colors. It had many colors, and it's all shaded so perfectly. And it had the stems and the leaves that support the flower. In that moment, I realized that it is impossible for me to create such perfection. It is impossible for anyone, any human, to create such a perfection. This perfection must have been created by something extraordinary, something magnificent, something sacred. At that moment, my heart, the only word I know at that moment, and my heart shall out was that. I just bow God. <laughs> That moment, that was the only word that I I could find to to be able to to explain that there's something behind this perfection, and it's beyond our human ability to create such a perfection. And that is leading me to look around. Not only that flower, the trees there, the stone, the water, the air. Even in myself, it feels as if like everything uh, made with the with this perfection and the sacred source of energy that brought me to have a higher curiosity and bow to explore more of the natural world because I feel that like to really in touch with the origin of of life i need to in be in touch with nature because that is really 
coming from the soul. I need to explore and find and be connected with the source to the natural life, not something artificial. It needs to be something original, originally natural. So I explore further into the natural world, exposing myself more to the forest, to the mountain, to different parts of the world to experience and to explore. And I realized that once you have that level of curiosity and with a very open mind, without a pre preconceptual judgment about what you are looking, you're just looking because you are curious and you're open to learn. And with that mind, then you can experience that thing as it is. So you can feel it as it is. You can see it as it is. You can experience it as it is because you don't have any preconcepts about it in that moment. Experiencing nature in this way, I start to realize that every life form, they, they have their way of life. They're living their life. And that is great of serving an ant, living their life, doing their thing, trying to keep themselves survive and alive. You realize that they have their own world. <laughs> they have their own life. They are not there for us. They are there for themselves. <laughs> and you are also appreciate, could appreciate that they are there for themselves because it's what they are. It is just unique and special. It is something that adding into this list of diversity of how our planet, of the our, our planet. And the more I observing nature in this way, I also see something in common of whatever I observe with myself as a human. Even if I observe a mountain, a stone, a tree, an ant, an earthworm, a bird, I see something in common about those life and me as a person, as a human. And one thing I see in common is that we want to thrive as a life, as a, as a living being. A tree wants to live a life to its best potential. Not only that they want to survive, they also want to survive to their best potential as being a tree. If they have all the supportive factors. A tree would try to uh, do a, a beautiful, magnificent tree. And ants, an animal, water, even water that we don't consider as a living being. The water also had its highest potential as being water. And water would prefer to have a chance to be living its life to its highest potential as being a water. Me as a human, as a person also, that's why I search, that's why I question. Because I also want to live my life, not only to survive day by day. I want to live my life to my fullest potential as a human. And this realization that we, what we have in common is already welcome me to feel that I am part of this planet Earth. I am part of the community of all beings. We have something in common. We also have a lot of things different and that's what makes us unique to each other. The tree and me also have something different to each other. And that's what makes us unique to each other. And we both are meant to be here. We all are meant to be here. We are made from the sacred soul. That's what makes me to believe through this experience and observation. And um, yeah, that and that 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 feel that there is no 
seeing that I am made from the same sacred source, feeling that it is bringing me to see I am one among all. I am not more special or less special. I am not above nor below. I am just a human, another unique species on earth, and I'm still searching and I'm still fighting what makes me unique, what makes me special as a human. I don't know yet. I didn't know. I'm, I'm still searching, but I have a lot of faith. I have a lot of faith that there is seed of potential in being human. And once this seed is grown, and if it grows to its foolish potential, it's going to be beautiful. It is not going to be ugly, and it's not going to be destructive. It's not going to be violent. It's not going to be all of that we experience in right now. So I take it as my responsibility to be in touch, to have faith, to search, to explore, to find that potential. And I believe that we could do that. We don't have to sacrifice the potentials of other life to be able to find our potential. We can coexist. We can find a way to live, a way to grow. That is also supporting the growth of other beings to their highest potential. I believe I have faith that it's possible. And that is uh, the second part of the story I'm going to share with you. That brought us to create what we call Gaia Ashram, which is a place where we're trying to find a way of life that is leaving the concept of coexisting with other beings. How can we live our life to find our needs to survive and not only to survive, to also thrive as a human in the way that is also supportive to other life around us to thrive and for our planet to thrive as a whole. I believe that our planet is also want to thrive as a whole. And what does that mean? I'm still exploring. Every day, my curiosity just keep growing and I'm grateful for it. So I'd like to share with you how we create Gaia Ashram. At least maybe you could, uh, yes. So we call Gaia Ashram as a community of all beings. That is to represent, <laughs> there's a thunderstorm. Are you guys hearing the thunderstorm? <laughs> Yes, a little bit. Okay, it's just really behind me. I think maybe um, we are at Gaia Ashram. We our life here is very a lot of nature around us. We don't have a lot of closed building because we want all the building that if you look outside your window, you will see the nature around you, <laughs> and you can see at my back here. There's a uh, already nature there. So the concept of community of all beings to represent that. Let's establish ourselves in the community of all beings. Why I call it as re-establishing ourselves. I believe that as we're experiencing now the destruction that we have done to our beautiful planet and our fellow diverse form of beings on these planets is that it is because we design our life with the idea that we are not part of the system, as if we are not part of the system. The earth has been through some destructions that has done to her and that she had to regenerate herself and regenerate many forms of beings on earth again. And those destructions, a lot of them are caused by what's happening in the space. And this time, this destruction is caused by within the system. That is us. That is humans. And it is because, I believe, because we didn't realize that we are part of the system. We are part of the community of all beings. 
and we have a different potential. We have the, the potential to thrive as human. We can create a beautiful society and our civilization can continue to grow without sacrificing, sacrificing the growth of other beings. I believe that is possible. And I believe that to do that, we need to come to the concept of community of all beings, seeing ourselves as one among all, not above nor below. And to re-establish ourselves in a community of all beings, then we create a space to contemplate on our beautiful planet Earth, Gaia. And uh, that is why we call Gaia Ashram. Ashram representing a place that where we live and learn contemplatively. To realize this concept, it need, it takes a contemplative learning, not only to the mind, but also to the heart, also to the experiential learning. And um, this is how we do it. Next slide, please. So before we have the land, at the moment is about 12 hectares. We, we begin with the six hectares of land. And uh, it's the land with the legal rights of the human world. We had the legal rights of the land. And we want to come to the land and start an eco village, exploring a lifestyle that coexists with other beings. And that is our intention. That is our dream. That is our needs, our wants but also taking into consideration that there are other beings living on the land before us. There are other beings living there. They won't recognize that the, we human have the legal right on this land. We can do whatever we want because we have the legal right. That is the human world. That is the human concept about rights. But to the beings that are living there, they are probably perceive us as strangers, a threat to their life, um, uh, something that is like alien to them. So we're trying to implement this co-living by introducing ourselves to the land. Before we do anything on the land, we take ourselves to introduce ourselves to the land. We take at least a year to just walk around the land, to just introduce ourselves to the land, to Hopefully, by walking gently around the land, we give ourselves being familiar by all beings there. We tell them, like, these people are, there is this new species arriving here. It was a, it was a bare end. Like not, the human activity done on the, the land before us was the heavy farming machines, and uh, tree cuttings and a lot of uh, those kind of activities. So how can we reintroduce ourselves as human to the land in a more gentle way? So we take our time, walk the land, or intentionally sitting and setting out our intention to let the land know that we would like to come here and co-living with you and your space. We do not come with the ideas of dominating. We come with the ideas of coexisting and co-creating. So we done through rituals, to mindful walking, mindful sitting. In the early days of Gaia Ashram, we have our daily routine of morning and evening practice where we Morning, we're mindfully setting intention, telling ourselves, telling the land why we are here, what are our intentions. And at the end of the day, we reflect on, are we practically living what we are believing in? So to keep ourselves reminded, as we don't see ourselves as we already enlightened people have seen all the time that... Uh, we are coexisting with all other beings. We're still learning and we need a practice, a routine that is constantly reminding ourselves of what we believe in. So the, that practice 
from the first day until now, we are still constantly uh, setting our intention and letting the land know why we're here. Every time we have new people, new group arrive at Gaia Ashram, we always introduce people to the land, even before we introduce people to each other. We say, we keep people aware that there are other beings who are living here, and this is also their place. Is it not only the place of the human? That is to keep us reminded. Next, please. And we also do practice uh, awareness practices because to feel the presence of natures around us, to really feel their presence, to really feel how their presence and our presence uh, influence each other. It takes awareness practice so that we can be constantly aware and that we can respond in the way that is we choose to make our action rather supportive, regenerative, than destructive. So a kind of awareness practice we do at Gaia Ashram is the any kind that is not harmful to oneself and others, such as yoga practice, a welcome meditation practice, Tai Chi practice, martial art practice that is not violent towards each other. And also awareness practice, awareness practice on nature. So we did different kind of activities to constantly raising that awareness that we are co-living, we sharing this space with all other beings around us. And they have as much right as we do to try to their best potential. And if anything we want to do with them, such as taking the eggs from the chicken, taking the vegetable from the garden, taking the fruit from the tea, we shall be grateful for what we receive. And that is what we practice daily here. And we also practice the awareness on the more than the world that is beyond we could name. <laughs> the, the world in the subtle realms. The more we explore the nature, the more we realize that there is so much more to explore. And probably even we spend our lifetimes to explore. It's probably we're going to realize that there is more and more beyond we know and beyond we can know as well. So then we include those worlds that is beyond what we can know also in our awareness practice. We call it awareness on the unknown reality, unknown world, satyrams, to remind ourselves that this how this planet Earth works is that it works in connection and everything is interdependent, co existing, co living with each other. Even we can't really explain how. We can understand something, a lot of things we cannot understand, but we believe that they still fall into the law of nature, the law of interdependence. I am here, that's why you are there, and you are there. That is why I am here. So that is the concept. And the practice of gratitude. So the practice of gratitude help us to realize this interconnectedness of all beings on our planet. Because every time we practice grat gratitude, saying that we express our gratitude for something, it means that we are realizing that our life and what we are value is depend on that thing. For example, if I say I'm grateful for the trees, I'm grateful for the water, I'm grateful for the air, I'm grateful for this life. And that means I'm realizing that I have this life because of the water, the trees, 
and all that's around me. I'm grateful for all this opportunity to share this story with you all here. And also because of uh, the Kadori Earth Program that inviting me. And also I'm grateful for my family that taking care of my children now. And that is make it possible for me to be here. I'm grateful for my team that protect me from all the disturbance so then I can do this. So this kind of practice of gratitude keep us in the space of realizing uh, the interconnectedness. And it is not, and it's also rise the sense of humility, a sense of humility that is not putting us lower than anything. It's actually empowering us. Because the more you realize that your life interdependence with many other things, the more you realize that you are not alone. You, you're not alone at all. You are, you're not, you are not, uh, you, you become free from the ideas of every man for himself. So uh, it comes to the idea, every man for every man. <laughs> and everything else is there because everything else is there. That is why I'm here. And gratitude also is the power. It's, it's uh, the power for actually our day-to-day -day action here and now at Gaia Ashram. Because when you have that deep sense of gratitude, your heart actually expands. And then that kind of energy, it you cannot hold back sometimes. When it, you're fully, deep, deeply grateful for something, you want to express it out. You want to pay it forward. You want to do something for what you are grateful for. And that is why I'm here also. I'm grateful for this life that I have. I'm grateful for this earth. So if anything, I can be of service for the earth. I'm happy to. And that is why what brought me here as well. So a practicing of gratitude daily help us to contemplate on the interdependent, interconnected of all things, as well as giving us this sense of uh, empowerment to continue uh, the journey that we are set off to. Next slide, please. And other thing we do here is to build a community of humans within the community of all beings. I have so much belief in community because I grew up in a community, in a rural village, and I see that we humans do need a community for that sense of safety and sense of security and for the learning. We learn from each other. We learn about ourselves through the reflections of the relationship we have with other people. It would be very hard to understand ourselves, who we are, by isolating ourselves from all the reality, from all the people. At least that's how I find out. I see myself in a relationship with other people. So why communities of the humans? We should create a community where the people could feel safe, could be themselves, could be relaxed from the expectations for them to be in a certain way that sometimes they are not agreed upon. So we want to create a committee where people can come back to themselves, reflect on themselves, and realize their nature. Because once we have that realization about our human nature, we realize also then that we are also nature. We are nature. We are not just part of it. We are it. We are we are nature. We have our human nature. Like the tree have a, the nature of the tree. Like the uh, earthworm has the nature of an earthworm. Human also have our human nature. We may be experiencing a lot of the human nature out there that we feel is destructive and it is violent, it is selfish. But there are also other nature within us that has been there always from the beginning. And Gaia Ashram creating a community where that nature can be nurtured. How? 
by creating a safe space, by creating a healthy relationship among the humans. And then we become again, have faith in humanity because we experiencing in our community the beauty and the uniqueness of each one of us there. How can we create a space for people to be and then find their unique part that they could contribute to the home, contribute to the community? Starting from learning how to contribute to the community of humans and realizing that we are also part of the community of all beings. We also have our part, our role to play in the community of all beings on their planet. And um, as uh, my journey that I share with you that I emphasized both learning about ourselves, about our world as humans, learning about our nature as humans, as well as learning about all other beings around us. So it needs to come together. And apart from that, living together as a community also help us to take responsibility for our life as a way to take responsibility for others. We need to take responsibility of our needs, what we need. We need food, we need shelter, we need friendship, we need support. How can we take those responsibility for our life in the way that is not causing destruction to others being to to natures and also could help others to meet their needs as well so this sense of coming back to nature and feeling that i am part of it we are part of it it leads us to the sense of responsibility for me, sense of, this sense of responsibility is not given by anyone. You're given to yourself because you realize that you're part of it. And it is not a burden. It is an honor. It is an honor to take responsibility for our planet. And the first thing to take responsibility of is take responsibility for our life. What do you need to survive? What do you need to be able to thrive? How can we take re responsibility of our needs in the way that is regenerated. If we are able to do that, it means that we are take responsibility for others as well. I learned this from observing nature. I learned that when the tree try its best to live its life as a tree, when it comes like foolish potential as a tree, in that way, the tree is serving a lot. If we come home to the animals, it's giving shade to the baby seed, the baby seedling, giving shade to the animal, giving oxygen to the planet. It draw oxygen, it draw carbon dioxide for the planet. The termites living its life as a termite, eating all the dead wood. By doing that is already served the home. That is turning organic material into the cycle, become compost to feed again the trees and all beings in the soil. I imagine a life that how can we live a life that we take responsibility of our life in our way of living and by doing that is already serving the home. So we use this as a concept. And uh, living together as a community help us to do that even better. So in a shared space, we could have access to our needs without taking too much resources. We don't need like everyone have five acres, <laughs> have an hectare of land to be able to give your, uh, to find your basic needs. We can come together and we can live on the land in the way that is regenerative and effectively manage to have our need met with the le least amount of land that 
necessary. And then the extra part of the land then can be dedicated to other beings, to the wildlife sanctuary, to the habitats of the wildlife. So that is um, why it is important that we take responsibility of our life in the most effective way and regenerative way. So here at Gaia Ashram, we grow our food with regenerative farming, we do eco building, and um, we share our food that we grow with each other and also with the animals and wildlife that come to the farms. We don't harvest everything, leave some for the animals also. That is our concept of sharing. Next slide, please. Embracing diversity in the community. As I shared earlier that diversity, acknowledging the diversity is like important part of learning to help us to realize that um, we are living in a very, very, very special planet. This planet is very rich and not only rich in terms of ecology and biodiversity, but also with rich with wisdom, wisdom of how biodiversity or how life could be regenerated. And in the community, then we also embracing the diversity of people. Although we are all human, but we are also all different. We have something in common. We are also different. And we should honor that differences as well, as that is part of the richness of the planet, the richness of humanity. So acknowledging, giving in the community, giving space to honor the uniqueness of each one. Firstly, have a space, a safe space for them to be who they are. And once they are who they are, and then they are in touch with their nature, the beautiful nature inside and everyone's always realizing that wow we are we human are actually quite a, quite a beautiful being we love we care we can be compassionate we can be supportive we could be helping that is our potential and then by realizing that learning to acknowledge the diversity of the human is also open our heart to acknowledge the diversities there out there in nature to honor each individual being as who they are. They all have their life and they are already grace in being who they are and living their life. We can share, we can contribute to each other's life. And that's how I see also as the potentials of humans is to contribute to each other life, to support each other. And so that we can say to ourselves or other beings around us, may be looking at us and say, it is great to have the human here. So what kind of life of a human that other beings around us may think of us in that way? So that is a quest, a journey of Gaia Ashram, of myself so far. And yes, I've already mentioned creating a safe space to be trusted to trust and to be trust. Next slide, please. Human beings as one unique being among many other unique beings. That is what it means to me, coexisting with the modern human world, that we are able to see ourselves as one among all, 
And it is not just as one among all, one unique being among many unique beings. And it's amazing how the earth have come to its wisdom that regulates how all these different unique beings can be interdependent. That is that is fascinating and that that is what I find that it is very special about our planet. I don't know about other other planet. I never been to any other planet. But realizing this is already enough for me to feel that it is a privilege to be here. It is a privilege to be alive on this planet Earth, even just to experiencing this. And better than that is that I can also contribute to the thriving of our planet in terms of ecologies, to the thriving of our cultures, of our human culture in terms of creating a culture of coexisting, thriving in terms of the social aspect that we are able to find a way to live with each other in a healthy and supportive way toward each other. Thriving in terms of economics, in terms that we are able to find our needs without sacrificing the richness of or the wealth or the ecological wealth of this planet. So it is fun to be one unique being among many other unique beings and living in a world among many worlds in the layers of many worlds. It is fun because when you are in that co-creative space, it's, what it takes is creativity. It's not dominant. It is not controlling. It is learning. It is observing. It is appreciating. It is fighting a way with your creativity to find a way to coexist with it. Last slide, please, the next slide. So that is my talk. So uh, the last word would be to be living in a beautiful place is a privilege and to co-create beauty is an honor. So not only that we uh, have the privilege of being in a very spatial planet with her richness of diversities, but also we could be part of it. We are part of it. And now we can be, we can take the honor of consciously being part of regenerating the biodiversities, regenerating the culture of honoring diversities, regenerating the social practices of honoring diversity, regenerating the economic lifestyle that honor diversity. So that's it for my talk for now. Thank you. <laughs> I think I, I now then will pass it on to Natalie. Yeah. Thank you very much, Om, for your sharing. It's always so amazing to hear that can feel the speech that you share is from the heart. Like just sitting here and I feel like really like connected. Mm -hmm. And in the be beginning, the sharing is like a personal story and it's a bit fun to see like how you find you as a human looking inside and outside and then being connected to each other and finding like we are part of nature. So it's a really beautiful sharing. So um, I'm sure like uh, most of you might have um, some questions or something that you want Om to share more, like even it's uh, stories or like uh, any like practical questions, like what do they do in daily life, like coexisting, what it is look like, any kind of questions you are uh, welcome to type in the chat box uh, in Chinese or English is also fine. Uh, we will help to translate. So uh, you are welcome to uh, spend some time to type your questions. Yeah. Okay. Um, meanwhile, I think like uh, some people, they might be typing their qu uh, questions. I just had uh, just curious, like um, you, 
although you mentioned like um, finding you as a human is a life journey and you don't have an answer yet but mm -hmm. i also want to like know what kind of like realizations or or like um like a feelings that you have, like what kind of answers during your journey? I'm sure like sometimes you feel all oh, human is like that. And then the next we feel all oh, human nature is like that. Because it's always like as an animal, we always say animal, they know what to do when they are born. But it seems like human being, we have to spend our whole life to find our answer. So I just want to like hear more from you, like the journey of you finding what is human nature. Yeah, what I find out is that Actually, that is what unique about humans is that the answer can be so diverse, you know. <laughs> and it take that is why I share personal journey, because you, it 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 take a personal journey to the realization, and then each individual may have come to a different conclusion, you know. And some people they they take the similar journey and they come to the realization, and then we say, wow. I need to contribute, I need to live my life as an artist. I need to do this. You come to that realization and you feel that this is what I'm meant to be doing. So it takes a deep learning journey within. We have something in common, like I mentioned. At the same time, we also are very different. We are very unique. And uh, please take this as like, a possibilities of you become an original for you 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 be different you be different you be you and no one can be like you no one can be like me they may today people may take something from me but people need to take their own journey and you be you and you be you and then you know that i'm i'm meant to be doing this i'm meant to be here and then i am original i'm I am indigenous, which is mean that I am deeply connected to our earth and I know my place on earth. It could be so many different forms. <laughs> so that is my realization about hum being human. That is why I am still exploring because my heart believes that I, if you invite me to share 10 years later, maybe I share different things because it's just the possibility is endless that's what i uh, my heart believe and every day i'm still curious and learn and then curious to see myself at the end of the day of my life like what i how does it feel to to go through all this journey and 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 experiencing all the different possibilities of the human life mm -hmm. i think the i think the thing that I probably want to share most to people is not what I have created. It is more of the faith in exploration into yourselves. And you will become the only one among all, very unique, very special. Thank you. Yeah, I um, I just remember that I forgot to mention we have around like twenty minutes for the Q and A sessions, so we really like uh, have enough time for discussions because I understand some talk maybe like they only have five to ten minutes, then you may think not much time. Uh, okay, we have one questions coming, and it's um how. How do you cope with the thought of climate change that require coordinate actions at the world levels compared to the local life? Can you read the question again? How do you cope with the thought of climate change that require coordinate actions at, at the world, le world level, like international level, mm -hmm. compared to the local life? How do mm -hmm. you cope with the thought that mm -hmm. we need to coordinate yeah. actions? Thank mm -hmm. you. I believe in that we need to take responsibilities and similar to what I shared with you before that mm -hmm. the it takes diversity of diverse approaches 
for to cope with this situation. It can't be only one way to cope with this situation. And it relating to also a personal journeys and to find our way where we feel most empowered to contribute and to trying to creating whatever we can in our capacity. And I have found that I have found my place that is this is the best place that I'm going to play a role with. So creating and demonstrating a low impact lifestyle as well as sharing the knowledge about this. And I believe that the people, like I mentioned before that if we have come to more and more realization that how magnificent our planet is and that we are part of it and that we are coexisting with the modern human world, it will already set us to a different direction as individual, as a group. And of course, the action at the global level has to also take place. And I totally supportive of people who take their role in that area. I'm connecting with the network, with the movement. And I see myself doing this part, doing my role here. And whenever support for me needed, it, I would do that also. I see that it takes diversity of approach to COVID this. There are people who work in the legal area trying to have legal rights or the law that we can apply more in the maker scale. Some people working at advocacy, some people working on the education, some people are working on the regenerations on the landscape, and some people is working internally to also chip and change to become more conscious and more connected to the reality. And it needs all that different approach. So mm. to keep our awareness and connection with the um, the network and the movement is also important and also what we uh, we teach here that Gaia Ashram is not a hideaway place. It is a place where we come and deeply connected, deeply grounded and then respond from our center. Nowadays at Gaia Ashram also extend our uh, action toward the local villages. So we establish a foundation called the Ways of Nature Foundations and located in the village and start the eco school models, um, which is to demonstrate an eco school model applying climate change adaptation in the schools and also uh, creating uh, complementary curriculum on climate change for the school in the local village, in the local school. Hopefully that if we are able to demonstrate an eco school model, both in terms of education and in terms of uh, implementation, it can create impact in, at the policy level. Mm -hmm. So that is, uh, we are also engaging and uh, in the big picture. Mm -hmm. But this is also related to, you say, every human, they are unique. Mm -hmm. So there's many, many roles and possibility in the world to cope with climate change. So we only have to find a road and see what's to connect it. Yeah. yeah. And the practice that I share, as I also share that, those are the practice that at least from our experience, it empowers, it's giving you energy, it keeps you going, nothing can stop you. Because... Mm -hmm. You are in a creative space. You are in a creative energy. You are in a in a in a in a hopeful space because mm. you see yourself doing something you believe in every day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And when talking about the connections, and there's one question. The first one to uh, thank you you for the touching journey that you guide us throughout the talk, and uh, she's wondering in the midst of the beauty of community life, where is the place for darkness, like ups and downs? 
and in a practical sense, are their story of dealing our known potentials within community life when it appears. So let's start with the first question. Can you read the first question again? <laughs> Yeah, like connected. It's more mm -hmm. like related to the mm -hmm. darkness of the community. Right. So in the right. middle of the beauty of community life, rest yeah. is for the darkness. Yeah. And also like how we dealing with the known as po potential within community life. When mm. it... Right. So I would say that it is hard to acknowledge the real beauty without acknowledging the dark mm. side of life. You know, I think actually the creating a space of deep connections, we also need to allow the space for that to be expressed. And the what the community does is that to hold that space, to hold that safe space for that expression. A lot of people have come here. They are not coming for, they're not only coming for the beauty, they're coming looking for a space to, to have that darkness being acknowledged, recognized, and honored. A lot of people come with the sense of hopelessness, come with the sense of lost faith in humanity. I hear this almost every day, every time people arrive. I have lost faith in humanity. And at the end of the day, at the end of the, when they walk away, I have gained faith in humanity again. So uh, the first part we would do is that holding a space for people to express themselves, that sense of despair, even though it's about their own life, isn't though about what is happening in the world. That is also part of our human nature. But we are holding that space more consciously and honoring this is part of us. We do not need to hate or to fear it. Once we are holding that part of us with more mindfulness and awareness of the community, we realize that behind it or the root of this is actually our wish or our dreams of the better. We want to have a beautiful life. Everyone wants to have a a better, beautiful life, beautiful planet. That's why we are sad about when we see destructions happening. So when we are having that space for people to express and honoring, yeah, it is, it is an honor to see someone expressing themselves how, how depressed they are about what is going on in the world. That means just how much they care about it, how much they love about it. So how we can be co-creating that space. So at Gaia Ashram, we are not only talk beauty, you know. <laughs> we also talk uh, all kind of things that is alive. We learn to embrace all part of us, even the part of us that is aggressive, that is violent. If we are with it more consciously, we can we can actually navigate it in a in a way that is more healthy. You know, we, we can we can we can be the boss of it more, and then we can we can uh, we can be with it in a more healthy way, and seeing that all kind of emotions have its functions, and then try to understand why they are there. Mm. Yeah. They are there. This is what I learned also from nature. They are there for us to try. So how can the anger that is arriving now telling me something that I need to learn so I can thrive? So that is the basis of our philosophy. Mm. So what's the second question again? <laughs> uh, I think it's um, like a similar you already um, answered. Yeah. So it's fine. Um, yeah, when you're saying like recognizing the nature that there's like good and bad mm. and also there's good even within the bad mm. so now it comes to the first questions it's mm -hmm. about the practical side okay. like how, how do you live with the end and torment because they also eat our food they create like they, they cause problems <laughs> then how to be patient like okay. a, it's like a practical tips for the second questions 
Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that is also something to be explored, you know, after you have all these concepts, all these um, philosophy that we are coexisting, how does it feel then to eat a fish? <laughs> and what are the principles around taking the eggs from the chickens and then like the termites that eating our house? So like, again, it's come to we taking responsibility of our life the best we can. And then also honoring and recognizing that every life form also trying to live their life. And then when we are taking something from others, uh, life form, for example, what I mentioned before, the fruits from the trees or the vegetable from the gardens, we do it in a respectful manner. And then also with the sense of gratitude. And then what if whatever we take from nature, for example, if we're eating fish, we have that responsibility to make sure that the species of this fish will survive. We have to make sure that if we are um, protecting ourselves from the mosquito, we hit the mosquito when the mosquito um, beating us. It is not that we have to kill all the mosquitoes in the <laughs> to protect ourselves from it. Or that I, the termite, do we, we do have, actually have a problem with termites. We do need to move the termites from our house and make sure that they're not come again. We need to put the hydrosols and stuff that to prevent them from coming to our building. We need to put some certain pens to protect it. But it is not to take it to the level that we need to kill all the termites on the land to feel protected from all those things. Actually, it's opposite. If we protect ourselves from anything, we also to make sure that they have their space, they have their 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 right to be. So uh, that is the principles around this. If you t eat the fish, you make sure the species of the fish survive and thrive. If you eat from the trees, you make sure the trees species continue. If you eat from the land, you make sure the land will also regenerate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. As you say, like the interconnectedness. If we are aware our living is depends on the nature when we take, we are aware and sensitive how much we take and how mm, exactly. And share also. A fair share is another uh, of the principles. Mm -hmm. If we grow, like I grow, uh, grow these mango trees and then it, it gives hundreds of fruits and let's take these hundreds of fruit. If we don't eat it all, then we sell to the market. We also can live for this, the, the animals, the birds, the, the other thing. Take some and leave some. For there because they're also contributing to a healthy a healthy mango to mm. the ecosystem mm. so they also work for it so keep thumb to them yeah thank you thank you thank you for the tips for interacting with the animals <laughs> oh, there's a questions about humans like uh, do you have any advice to give the people who live in hong kong like since you already been to hong kong <laughs> Uh, who find themselves in a very like precious cities and how can we open our senses and foster the connections that you mentioned and mm -hmm. considering that individuals they are heavily involved in the business they may not have the power to prioritize their free times so mm -hmm. any tips for the hong kong people to yeah. open senses yeah yeah maybe two things two maybe two easy things uh, one thing is that if you are, I, I've been to Hong Kong and then I, I saw that the natural space is not far away from the city at all. If you could fly at least once a week or once a month, at least an hour, it has to be at least an hour in the natural space. I, I think that will also bring you some realization and connection. Why it has to be an hour? Because when you go into nature, from the normal life that you are mostly um, occupied by the busy, uh, the the business and uh, the business life, it will take some time before your mind 
re un, un, uh, unoccupied from that. So if you go to nature for only 15 minutes, you may see like, oh, I don't connect with nature at all. I don't feel anything at all. I've been still thinking about my life or my work. But if you keep yourself there for an hour, half a day, you maybe go through the phase of like, oh, I'm feel tired. I want to fall asleep. I don't connect with nature at all. Allow yourself to fall asleep. And coming back again, oh, I'm feeling so bored. I need to walk around. I cannot be still. Allowing yourself to be walk around. At one point, you will reach to a stage where you will be able to just being aware of what is there. And then you will start to be preoccupied. Um, you mean, I mean, like, unoccupied, <laughs> less occupied by, by your normal life. Yeah, that is the nature of our mind. Firstly, when you meditate also, when you meditate for the first time, the first 15 minutes, half an hour, you say, like, I don't I don't want to meditate anymore because my life is so busy, uh, my mind is so busy. But if you keep sitting there, it has the nature of coming and going, coming and going, impermanent. Eventually, it will have less and less power dominating you. And then you'll be uh, experiencing more and more the nature. Like I mentioned in my experience, when you go somewhere with pure curiosity and you are present and open to what you are observing and experiencing, you will really experience them as they are. And you'll be really touched because nature has this very alive life energy and it can touch our, our hearts so easily. That mm. is about going, exposing yourself in a natural space and um, going to uh, KFBG, for example. <laughs> it had the, the, the farm. Uh, I went there. It is a beautiful place, and it's easy enough to walk around, and there's a lot of diversity. So you'll be comfortable enough in the wild space. I think for the people who are not used to a wild space, that kind of space is good to begin with. You feel comfortable enough and it have enough wilderness to be exposed to. And the second advice is around experiencing with people. People are also nature. Could you create um, a circle or a community of people or with your friends or a few people coming together and just share how you feel today authentically? Sharing how you feel, what you think about life, the world, give it a topic to share honestly and learn to hold space for each other to just express, to just to be, to just to be authentic that we do not need to mask on to each other. And then you will already start experiencing simplicity, nature. We are also nature. You see like how vulnerable we are as a human how sensitive we are as a human and compassion start to happen. And that when compassion start to happen, empathy start to happen, your heart in a sensitive space is ready to experience anything deeply. Mm -hmm. So that would be an advice in the Hong Kong, you can do that, find a space, create a space for a community. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you for the tips. <laughs> and uh, I am aware we only have five minutes, but I spot there's one question I really also want to bring out. So maybe if possible, you can give us a quick like um, uh, sharing on that is because when you're talking about the practical tips on how to explore ourselves. So this question is about any fear will occur during the journey because there's a lot of unknown, many possibility then how do you deal with the fear? Okay, that is a very good question. Thank you for asking. I'd really like to share it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have shared if you didn't ask these questions. <laughs> the, the unknown is, it will be there, of course, fear of uncertainty. Fear of uncertainty will be there. And you will also need to learn to trust the unknown. You will need to learn to trust the unknown because we are, you are exploring something beyond what you already know, something that yourself that you haven't known. You will need to be in a space of unknown. You need to take a journey that you don't know where this journey is going to end up. And how do we deal with this fear? 
for my experience, being fuzzy being in nature help a lot. It's just giving this sense of peace and calmness. You know, when I am a forest, I don't know much about the forest. And it looks even chaos. It looks wild. It looks like I, am, I know nothing about it. And at one point of my life, I like to go to nature that I don't know about them also. Because I wouldn't want to occupy myself with a concept that I know about, about these trees or these animals. I want to go in a wild space that I don't know. And when I go to that space, in the space of wilderness and the chaos, my heart realizing simplicity and also able to feel, if I'm able to feel calm in the wilderness, which is full of the unknown, I'll be calm also with the unknown of the universe. And that is there is one thing that helped me. And in a space when you are when I expose myself to nature and when I keep observing and feeling touch and feeling amazed, feeling fascinated by them, in that space of being touched, amazement, fascination, gratitude, in that moment when your heart feeling that it, fear doesn't exist. That feeling is fully occupied. So you are in the space of more trust. So if you are able to, if you keep yourself exposing to nature, allow nature to touch your heart deeply, I find that naturally and gradually you become more and more feeling secure with our earth. And what is coming after that, for me, is the faith. I cannot give, I don't know what, what is the end of the road of the unknown. Mm -hmm. But I trust that it's going to be something beautiful. Mm -hmm. It's going to be something useful. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. And one more thing. <laughs> is that I also talk to the unknown. I also talk to them. At one point of my life, I call them God. Another part of my life, I call them the universe. Nowadays, I call them uh, Gaia. I also talk to them, the unknown. I all, I constantly telling them about my journey. Even though my heart knows that they are watching me, I still talking like. This is my intention. I want to learn deeply about myself. I want to live my life to my foolish potential. I am open to take whatever it takes to find it out. And I'm committed. So that I constantly talking to them. So I, because I'm acknowledging the unknown and feeling more familiar with it. Actually, I'm more familiar with the unknown than the known. <laughs> There's more unknown than the known to my life at the moment. <laughs> Yeah. thank you thank you beautiful i hate to stop but i have to <laughs> because the time uh i am also aware there's still questions that's on the list so maybe later i can share with om if you have time to give like more your sharings then i can send it to you all and uh thank you very much for the sharing today it's really really like meaningful and we i'm sure we enjoy your kindness i can see like many comments they say like they enjoy your kindness uh, uh so uh iris can you please share yeah uh in order like to exchange more then we still have a survey step for you that you can fill in we will st uh, send it to you full email so you can um fill in the survey and let us know like uh, how you like the uh, talk or anything that we can improve and then in the next slide 
is that since today's OM is all uh, talking about like actualizing human natures, I think it's very a good connection with our next talk is we invite Manish uh, to talk about from deathlyhood to a livelihood. It's also wow. like about how we live in, as a career to actualize ourselves, our soul, and also to protect the nature. So I find it's like you guys, you will like it. And um, next slide, please. Yeah, and uh, we have our uh, respectful um, teachers, Satish Kumar is coming in next month. There's a lot of activities. Some is already partly full. So if you are interested to know, please go to this website and you can explore more with the activities that we can do offline in Kodari Farm. For the next slide, please. Yeah, and uh, if you like our conservation work and education work, and also be closer with us, with our project. So please consider to join our membership programs to support us and to encourage us to continue our work. Um, so last but not least is to thank you very much for all for your time and thank you for all the participants to stay like uh, behind like two minutes. So thank you very much. And uh, Om, do you have any like final thoughts that you want to end our sessions? So thank you everyone again for your presence here. Thank you for KFBG and I can thank endlessly that what make this moment possible. So I hope that there's something you can find it useful from this sharing. Otherwise, at least we get to know each other. At least you get to hear about some crazy journey of someone and that at least you know that craziness is What's going to save us? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. So thank you for your time, everyone. So hope to see you like somewhere, like next talk or in Satish Kumar activities. Thank you. Good night. Thank uh, you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.